and other parts of Papua New Guinea. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those in favor say aye. Those against say no. I save it. Governor Morobeb. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Lord Speaker, Lord this plot time, Lord Parliament. I want something to talk. Thank you to you, want them, uh, Clerk of the Assembly, uh, Clerk of the Parliament, leader of, uh, leader of the government business. Long write him me, long give him raising matter of public importance on this country. Now we don't thank you all members of parliament, all come, opposition come, one time government come. All send on one time so that you can scale him this little matter of public importance. Now give him talk talk. Long this little talk talk, now I think you may come up him. But I recorded in chat long answered. Now government will this country, headed by the Prime Minister, Honorable the James Marabe. All by look look long him. Now when him walk all by give him. Long give him walk, give him Kaka Ludisla resolution, when him to talk him, make him, when him think thing you may pass him long today. Mr. Speaker, acting speaker, me kerab long make him talk talk, long talk piscine. Uh, talk piscine because plenty play you mean on this country. Uh, you know what I said before, before plenty man English is me good, it, all white man it is me in English. Plenty play me go school in English, you may serve long English good. You may give him speech good, now write him good English, but today now qualitatively English him good down. Now, all now go on talk piscine. Also now, this is a talk piscine, and talk less play me now on country. Also now, I'm giving speech on talk piscine. Now, behind can, behind through before me finish him up, by me making him talk English. Because talk piscine is our lost long vocabulary. Some of the talk talk, I mean, it's not good, but even stop the talk piscine. But it's not good to talk, talk English. Also, about me making more Mr. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Recting Speaker, me crap on this plot time, long address him issue, long loneliness, long place play you me, and I will walk on the manda, now place play you me, long Wabek, now long Inga province. Mr. Deputy Speaker, me like him you me on this point in time, think him also you me country, you me country. Must give me to the you belong about. You think you blow Samurai, you think you blow Finzapen, you think you blow Yulong Yanguram, you think you blow Yulong Wanimo, you think you blow Yulong Manus, you think you blow Yulong Daru, you think you blow Yulong Orokaiwa. When you have you talk about thinking, you come on this hub. That's all the display time is directing speaker, me like him, you mean thinking, awesome country. This is a country. Now, bear with me, pull up, look, cry, and you're going to talk to. Bear with me, pull up, look, cry, and you're going to talk to. Because from the time a young boy, though 1975, Mr. Grade 7, country and a mass look seem independent. Me legally boy through, me people walk long distance, long go celebrate him independence. Long distance, Belgium people pull up through long country, me people country, me people money more stop long Australia, me people come up country. Now you can see me people now over the man of place now over the heart, long Papua New Guinea, you may stand up and talk by me some country. Now you make some country. You make some country, you know, 1975. Somebody in Mandu Civic, I'm leading you, me, long seem independence. But I'm a up long country. I'm mean, making talk country. I'm mean, not even making talk talk long Civic. No, Mr. Recting Speaker, I'm mean, talk talk country. Now, I'm mean, uniting you, me country. Now you make some country. No, 16 September 1975. Mr. Recting Speaker, you may not been thinking about them. Maybe you want to come up behind time. Now you move to face him, yeah? This is a time low in order, I mean, one the issue in this country. I mean, the issue in one block in this country. You will go anywhere. Time comes to school in 1979. Long University of Papua New Guinea. We can walk about. Honorable Peter Oni, let me can witness him in this talk talk. Because me tell one time, I mean, you can brought up with me this plot time. Me plus school in university. Me plus can walk about all the way. Go to Babakuri. I know Babakuri. Oh, where you going? Tatana, Baronina, this lap me from the town. No one will play Papua and holding me plan on road. Over the Papua and Toba by the Mina, making plan on a son and blow over on slap. Now we blow over the camera, Boroko. No one will play man by come holding me. No idea, and blow over free. All Kayuko, all come sing sing, 
What's on it now? Big blood through. Or clapping pipe, no killing mad, no last make the two, biggest make the two. And come along, what on the manda? Board level of what on the manda now, Wabek. Minus how we good on this platter, so the member for what on the manda, Bartablomi, or writing newspaper, or writing what on the manda, or call him name, or send me call him what on the manda. That's a true, true, and what on the manda now, Wabek now, Usad Arapla, Minus clear. But, Miss Rating Speaker, in your first blood time, M. Kamablo, this lab. And second time, the third time, Kamablo, this lab, yeah. Me will not train man, me will carry good news, you're going to walk on Amanda. Or tomorrow, me will carry good news, you're going to walk on Amanda. Or do train, or carry him, go to walk on Amanda. Start with walk on Amanda, and the Turkey, you're going to walk on Amanda, and you're going to walk on Amanda. When I'm a Kobe, I'm a Ablo, when I'm a Enga province, you've laid somewhere. And carry him on this flat. We did a good job there. We people bring Bible and people bring good news. You're going to come out and this is a place named Longen. Wapana Manda, no place Yaramanda. We look at him talk good news. You're going to Yaramanda. We look at him good news. You're going to know the man carrying good news. You're going to train. Patrick Karim Kam, Emil Patrick. Seven day Karim Kam, Emil Seven day. That's what we look at him train. We look at him going to put him on Yaramanda, no Wapana Manda. No today, we look at him on Sam. Six people are man over, dying on this lap. And people want to come kiss me along, all things you look at the Morabe. People are carrying good news, you go over, come out, good plan, and make him run over. Then people are up, come out, not only killing number of people, and we win him up, not the islands, only killing them. Now, why are you killing me on this point? Why are you killing me, Mr. Acting Speaker? Now, I still kill him six people, man, member of Murbaya. Member of the Murbaya, long time man, Coco sent to him on 60 plan man. Plan he sent to. Some block he sent Bunara na Igoya, or he sent Gan na Igoya. He go down the water, the water can't even go. He go no toilet, no dine, no stop. He go on the map. He sent to so. Number long, number long man die long. He sent on 60. Mr. Ratings speaker. Number long man, number long man in die or men in die or people in die. He sent more than this number. Post Korea writing law. Mr. Ratings speaker. And this is a very serious matter. Very serious matter now. You know, every long, honorable day, uh, Sir Peter Butter, uh, Sir Peter Ipatas. You know, every long, enter so. You know, every long, uh, honorable Mickey Kaya. You know, every long, enter so. And you know, every long, Dr. Lino Taso. We know, Lo Wabe. And every long, this for country. Every long, this for country. No country must have been since slavery. Country must come. Country no go nari talk 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 talk. For example, chow kablo manusha para bisabia. You know this lokai. Action is what we need. Action you need in Loan. So the country can address this problem. Country as a country, we think as a country. Poor about you simply gonna forget about you more than Poor about you when I'm when I'm half. I gonna forget about you. Tola man a poor about Daru. A poor about anything. You think only you. You Papua New Guinea. It was a group of Papua New Guinea that's all. Now you mean, time you meeting in Papua New Guinea. But you come up, you want them, sample solution for them. Also, today, me appeal to all honorable members. You play by talk talk. Now, me open the window, you play talk talk, you like people, but speak up by controlling. You play talk talk, you like people, you play talk talk. You play talk talk. Me open the door. You play talk talk. When I'm wrote by you, you come up, you want Now, address in this play heavy. Because that is the prevalent problem affecting the majority of the people of this land. You talk about investment. You talk about millions and billions. Long gains, no one kind you are going to talk talk. That's the time heavy stuff on ground. Heavy stuff on life for people. And you are going to talk talk nothing. Talk talk nothing. When something in and up come up and you are going to talk talk nothing. You can see feelings long and I'm not going to talk to you. That's what people need in action here. Yeah, this election did not come up. Mr. Acting Speaker, and I want us to think as a nation. My heart cried for my country. Time, Australia can't take over this country. The hand is compressing. I'm going to make a fight here. I'm going to make a fight here. Now I'm going to come back. Now I'm come back. Thank you all more. We're going to come back. But you will fight long interest for country. Olela, Prime Minister. Time all Ella, all Matiawi, 
Onu bunda Matya ve Yuvi sen Matya ve Yuvi. Hadi varır ya. O kadar sen lan oğlan fight long province long all. And it went through the dead years, Mr. Prime Minister. Conservative Prime Minister will come, won't harm him. Now, Prime Minister, you don't remember this little time yet. Now, me, big brother, probably you may be member. Now, me fight long. Now, motion also, me fight. Now, Alex in province. You know, not Roman. Me think also country. Me more be man, but so me fight no country. Now, Alex in province. Don't tell me I've been all out, Roman, all not been fight. In actual fact, me been fight one time. I'm, a, uh, I'm your worry. The late army, your worry. How I hell a man by fight one time? Oh, sorry, Southern Islands by fight one time me. Because me fight one time me, because good people of country, me fight one time me. Now we want it. You do over, you come nothing. Do over, you know I fight with you. Fight them below. Now me man will join you fight, no simple not, and they go fight ya. And me, uh, me not have him name below me, so God, so we got record long God. Uh, me fight ya. Now you come province ya. Hey, you play some DSIP and PSIP, and you play the idea of you play. Me fight one time so many long, Buna Pope, one place place from Tolai, all call him Buna Pope. Me fight one time on Buna Pope, yeah. Over the man, silly, the only man is a district. Which one? Over the man is a public district. Population is a public district. Huh? Maybe I will represent him district, yeah. All call him plenty thousand population, plenty heavy is a public district. You mean by putting 20 million, 20 million me took him so many. No, Buna Pope, one more place or call him Buna Pope. No place for Tola yet. No. No, 78 members already of him got man. Only talk, yes, Pampla give you 20 million. But come right here, Honorable the Patrick Porat, and the 20 million by me blowing budget, now you will not see money, so go down and start with 10 million past them. That's why you got 10 million. Me fight no country. Me don't fight no me, no more of Me fight no country. Was electricity me and me. Can can electricity stop? Water cut him, mountain cut him, solar water cut him, wind cut him, cloud cut him, can can cut him. Now you, you can see big blood time stop. I fought for you. Today you, you now enjoying 10 million. When you stop long enough, Mr. Acting Speaker. Me and my mamas, time you look him. How sick long, bogia. Ah, electric. Time you look him, cut out some million now. We go long one of the civic, let me look in one of them. Young Guru Sassi and the Miluki one flower. One of them, water supply come to a place. We go to Kundiawa, by me looking one flower. School by Stablo, what a symbol or where? Me by no mass because every long DSIP, you kiss him, you have something, me fight long him. You kiss him. Today, me come to talk, we have to take top action. Top action long. You may help me all I believe me, Lohenga. Governor, me, I can't believe me to talk. You know what one plus time is that? Me that's a mist of time. Time for you. You know, no good time, good plus time. Brother. Honorable Governor, we have a point of order from the opposition. Sorry, 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 remember. And talk about the very serious issue that has affected this country, this nation. We're here to talk about what's affected the people of Anga and Waperamanda. Why are we laughing about an issue that is eating into the fabric of this nation. Why can't we be serious about our debate? Bangalore Kai, Lord People of Rwanda. Bangalore Kai, Lord People of Lower Panamanda. Honorable uh, And we are laughing leader. about it, Mr. Speaker, with due respect, Lord our Honorable Leaders. Please, show some decorum. Show some decorum. Let's debate about this thing and find some solution, some way forward. This is the opportunity for us to... Honor, uh, Honorable to Opposition Leader, <laughs> Honorable Opposition Leader, I take note of your uh, point of order. Uh, it seems to be making it long like a statement, so I will allow you to make a debate in regard to that. Uh, Honorable Governor, I will ask you to continue, but your 20 minutes have already lapsed. 15 minutes. <laughs> Honorable uh, Governor, as you are a mover of this motion, I would allow you to present the motion that you have 
for that you'd like to table on Parliament, I'll allow you for that. I'll not give you much more than five minutes. So go ahead. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, so I need your clearance because I'm the author of the motion, so I must conclude later. If you, if you say I, after all of the uh, honorable members have spoken, I will conclude later and give me five minutes. Five minutes, I can. That, that, that is why, uh, Honorable Governor, I, I gave you five minutes to conclude and table to what you have. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Member for uh, Wani More Green. I can see that you're excited, which is very good, because you're going to speak. Uh, as long as you get the lead from the speaker. All right, uh, all right, having said all of those problems, I don't need to repeat. You have sent it through the Facebook all of the social media, what have happened, uh, certain action needs to be taken. But it's important I, I bring the motion so that we can begin our debate uh, and help, help the nation. Uh, I'll just recommend what I think should be recommended. In the light of all of those, I will, Mr. Speaker, I will tender my copy of my speech to you so that you can incorporate it in the answer. In the meantime, and then those who want to have access to them, they're entitled to it. So, Mr. Speaker, very important peacekeeping role is, uh, is needed uh, in this country, and I call, I call and I recommend uh, for a uh, peacekeeping troops, peacekeeping troops to attend to this matter. Wapanamanda and Wabek and the fighting that occurred there and most likely maybe I just think might continue. I recommend, Mr Speaker, that we have a peacekeeping force established by the government to look at in this matter with the government, consultation with the government of Enga, with the consultation with the government of Papua New Guinea, with the consultation with the government of Australia, our good friend, and with the consultation with the United Nations. And uh, all of the provincial government if they wish to come in. And I recommend for a troop of peacekeeping Peacekeeping role is to one, I recommend, that they make sure that peace and security are attained in that area. Number two, facilitate the political process. Number three, this team will protect civilians who have been affected or about to be affected or likely to be affected. We need to attend to them. Number four, assist the disarmament and demobilization and <clears throat> reintegration of former combatants. Number five, support the organization of democratic election. Number six, protect and promote human rights. We, we know, we show, uh, we show that there is the <clears throat> abundance of bridges of human, human rights bridges. Number six, protect and promote. Yeah, yeah. Number seven, assist and restore the rule of law in that area. And that we provide, the government of Papua New Guinea provide the adequate resources and security be guaranteed. Uh, I recommend that, that uh, there be a chief mediator appointed uh, to oversee this thing in the submission which I'm unable to say because of lack of time and is staff and facilities. Number four, initial period of appointment be made six months with a report to be made for parliament. Number six, uh, yeah, number, the, the chief mediator be responsible for training of staff and that may be made available to uh, similar circumstances elsewhere in Papua New Guinea. And that one, and the number eight, that the one set, set up Australian government, uh, this government, our government, 
we appro uh, approach the Australian government to, to support with the logistic support, resources and training of Papua New Guinea peacekeeping team under the Australian Papua New Guinea Bilateral Security Agreement. I understand from the Prime Minister that he's already dealt with the Australian government to come up with this kind of agreement. So I, I, I propose that uh, Prime Minister and his team will enhance talking with the Prime Minister of Australia to enhance that bilateral treatment, uh, security agreement and have it, uh, have it utilized. That the Australian Papua New Guinea bilateral security agreement be rectified immediately. We hear talks, but let's bring that uh, proposed agreement to the parliament so the parliament can uh, peruse the agreement and par parliament can debate and parliament can rectify as soon as we can. That the chief mediator enlisted support and ad advice of similar peace missions work such as the UN mission to resolve the conflict like what happened in the autonomous region of Bougainville. We agree with the United Nations for peacekeeping troops to help us in the Bougainville, Bougainville conflict and I call on the Prime Minister and his team also to engage the United Nations. Honourable Governor. And the security is provided. The Honourable Honourable Governor from Morobe, I interrupt you. Uh, the five minute, five minute extension I gave you is slaps. I will ask you to seek leave of the chair and you can table your, uh, to incorporate your. Uh, I seek the leave of the parliament, or uh, the speaker, to table uh, documents relevant and pertinent to this motion uh, before you, Mr. Speaker. Leave granted. Uh, provincial member for uh, Thank you, Mr. King speaker. Uh, I think just a caution for us leaders, especially since all these proceedings are on camera, that when we are dealing with issues where a significant loss of life is involved, at least you may saw him sample bell sorrel or people blew me. People all I call him all Enga or one waran. I know that my people are deeply grieved by the huge loss of life. Low line, low head, low wara. And so, first of all, I think on behalf of the people of Isipik, me play Salim Strong Platok Sore, Wantem Bel Wari, Igo, Lol People Bloenga, Na Wapena Manda in particular, Na me play Sana Pontem Leaders Blong, Enga Province, Wanam Kain Halibim, suppose me play Isipik, Inap Logibim, me play one Wara is tap. There's something in me, Kamal Pantab Long. Wapna Manda, I mean, asked at the soul, I mean, Guriana talk something, he come up. You miss a long time yet, also, me got big, heavy, stop low, upper highlands. Meeting him this time, he been sit down upside now. He been got this la killing, he come up long, tarry now, only kidnap him more than 20 play young, la Mary. Now, me been stop also, deputy, chairman, long, gender equity, the women's empowerment committee, na me. Ask him to have sight, now me talk talk. Lo bell worry blow me, lo this lo 20 play young play Mary. While you go through long rape, lo this la kidnapping now. This la time, me been making one blessing out, one blessing neck, lo upside. Now me been asking government, lo set him up one blessing special task force. Suppose you me, call him you me yet, or some independent state, then you me need lo bring him all get a power, lo state, he come, bung him, na by inap him long. Bunny sim all people blow you me, lo kind heavy. First time lo life blow me inside lo country blow me pla. Me look him dead body only pile him on top long. Backside lo car, also in firewood. Also in big copra, you me throw me nothing lo backside na carry. Lewa blow me brook, me saw a lewa blow plant, papa you can see brook. I'm only selling one video blow young pla picking in here, me hard lo watch him. Legally picking in here, only cut him lo bush knife. There's no something I should make him, na me blow leader blow country, must find him hard lo sleep lo night. Time me been making him sing out long upside. Expectation blow me or sem. By me walk him all this place, something he come up, na by come up, hurry up. Mr. Harim sing out, Blombik Labrata, Governor Bloenga. 
Me come inside first time, Lord, this will house. Me stop outside yet, them sing out, sing out, long law and order. Me play all governors, me play making plant the neck, plant the sing out. Me play ask him, Lord, Halibim. No God looks away, so I come. Now this la big play heavy come up. Now you me yet to say, you me kidnap no good. Oh, how now something come up? That's all all that I sign long and me stop in this. Me like give him example also. So was one black balusi crest. One black F100 them crest. Are you approved by me selling all investigators? All that kind kind line. By me try to make him work, find him out, lo make sure also. Next balus by non up crest. Are we taking the same approach now with this many people dead? Are there some actions that you may also have government, we can put it in place so that, you know, people blowing at us all, people blow up a highlands as all, but all Papua New Guineans can be assured that the next time someone is planning an event like this, we are ready. Are we doing those kinds of things? Is the government, the independent state of Papua New Guinea doing those kinds of things? If not, then why not? And the other question should be, when? When am time by me making? It's one thing for us to come and stand here and say, oh look, me plan for making desla, 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 desla come, but people are still being murdered and mess. Lo killing five, six, seven, this la kind I think we've already gotten used to that. So I'm no more here. Black Wednesday come up, no pot mospina. 22 plus man Mary and I. That's all I'm no more here. It's okay. You may wait in up 70 or 80 or how much <coughs> die under the weapon of now. I'm now, you may skin blow me care up. That's not good enough. Leaders, it's just not good enough. If we need to amend the budget, then treasurer, you kiss him come the floor, you may amend him, put him 700 million or 800 million or whatever it takes to protect our people. What is so hard about that? Yeah. What is so hard about that? You may align the passing budget, you may stop, yeah? If we need to bring specialists from overseas, well, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing that? You know, in Australia, some years back, they had a madman kill about 35 people, I think, in Tasmania. As a result of that, Australian government Emmy Act, Nami Rausim, all get a gun to this day. It is very difficult for you to go and find guns in Australia. They took out all automatic weapons. That's what a government does. It responds immediately. When are we going to take the guns of these terrorists operating in the Upper Highlands? When? When are we going to develop the capability? If we need to send a thousand troops up there to deal with them and deal with them hard, then why not? Is that not the price we should be willing to pay to protect innocent lives of women and children? We are a government, for goodness sake. Let's act like one. Why are we protecting? Why are we not interested in prosecuting these terrorists with extreme prejudice? Other countries do it. All other countries are working here. Every state reserves the right to the use of force in the protection of its citizens. It is an inherent right of every nation. Why isn't Papua New Guinea using that right? Why not? Leaders, gentlemen, ladies, why aren't we using it? We need a strong deterrent. We need a strong response. We need our intelligence capabilities built immediately so that we can assure not just the people of Wapanamanda and Enga and Hela and Southern Highlands, but all Papua New Guineans, that this state is capable of protecting their security and safety. We must. Otherwise, our legitimacy as a government has to be questioned. Investors are leaving because they think we can't run our own country. 
And what have we done to demonstrate that we can? We can't protect our own people. We can't. That's what Robin Amanda is telling us. And it's no laughing matter, leaders of this Honorable House. We need to get the guns, we need to get the ammunition, and we need to do that immediately. I'm worried simply because if you look at the definition of what constitutes a failed state, we tick most of the boxes right now. The number one qualification of a failed state is its inability to provide security for its citizens. That's the number one qualification. We have that. The number two qualification for being a failed state is a capacity gap in a government's ability, in a state's ability to provide social services. Our people have to wait days in hospitals. We can't even get vaccines because we cut the vaccine budget, according to the good health minister. So we tick the second box too for a failed state, my fellow leaders. The next one is the legitimacy of the state. Our people are already questioning all of our state institutions because they have lost trust. They are struggling to accept the legitimacy of elections. And I know we are dealing with it, and I know we are going to talk about it, but we tick that box too, my dear leaders. We tick already three of the most important boxes for a failed state. We tick it. What's the fourth one? Poor governance and corruption. Do we tick that box or not? <clears throat> Prolonged economic crisis is the fifth box of a failed state. Do we tick that box? Extreme inequality is another box. I could go on, but let me stop him, Lohat. It is time for us to get a serious security briefing on this floor. It is time for us to take emergency measures. I made a comment to the good Prime Minister and his deputy two days after the events in Port Mosby, and I said to them, my dear brothers, my dear leaders, if I could, I would give you both medals for firefighting. You are the two top firefighters in Papua New Guinea. I said that to them. We cannot continue to fight fires. We need to be strategic. We need to start to build the interdiction capability of our security forces. The threat is not outside, the threat is inside. Last month, Port Mosby, a couple of months back, it was West New Britain. Upper State Asol and Waban Amanda. Or one wara blow me. Me talk sorry. And I want some assurances from this House that we can say confidently next month and the month following and the month after that. By this the same heavy in on a come up on our part of this country. I want us to give our people that assurance. If we cannot, then we should seriously search our conscience. Me, Sabe, you, Mr. Khan, a cross fight, talk, talk, law here, but I think we all want the same things. We all want what's best for our people. We all want our people to live in peace and harmony and to raise our children in relative safety and security and to have an opportunity to raise our children and then their children. I think that's what every Papua New Guinean wants. And this house, this state, the independent state of Papua New Guinea, must give them that. Otherwise, companies are going to pack up and leave, and our problems will worsen. Our smart citizens are going to start looking for opportunities elsewhere because they are worried about the safety and the security of their children into the future. We can't have that. Provincial uh, member for thank you, his speaker, Mr. Yeah, Acting Speaker. Time has lapsed. Ten minutes. Provincial uh, member for Enga. Thank you, uh, <coughs> student, uh, Speaker. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, firstly, me, on behalf of my people, 
me like uh, talk sorry, long passing, long late. The Honorable Jimmy Oguru, who's already been uh, Minister of Long uh, Education. Um, I'm a one blood man or leader of Jimmy, Minister, who's already been more close to one of the people of Long Now It is appropriate that uh, people can sell him talk sorry. You go to family, uh, electorate Long Hang, Long Sina Bundi, and two old people of Long uh, we like talk sorry, but more importantly, uh, me like talk or some contribution long em long education or country and been big pla uh, too long in a province. He had a good relationship with us, and uh, on behalf of the children of Enga, especially, me like talk sorry. Now passing blow one blow good blow leader blow me. Uh, being in this place too, me like kissing this place down, so talk sorry on family blown. Online, blow me yet, only been fight now. Uh, only in, in die. Uh, I think uh, it is also important for us uh, leaders to uh, to realize that. Uh, this player, me one player, incident where he got fight. Uh, that's all. I'm all man yet, only elect long, go fight. No bank ground, me talk or say, no, I'm not going to sleep now, stop nothing. Work for me for the last 26 years to give education because I'm not changing mindset. More people blame me. Talk some of people every time. Work for leader and not talk talk. You know, long carry gun, blow police, police gonna stop him walk. But people blame me. Time me got this law with me. Me like talk here. For some more leader blame me. I'm working work from all. From the local level government up to the national level. Talk talk. No only no can fight. And I'm in my last place. Kiss him school. Put him up in the school where future belong only guaranteed. That's a plenty time. You mean I can blame the government, that's all? Plenty time. Responsibility, I'm stable, you need it. <coughs> so, some citizens blowing our military talks away. Fighting him, but time you go fight him, blowing that. This play incident, he come up. This play big club. Killing, he come up. Time me been away in his uh, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Just for the information of the House and the people of this nation. Me kiss him intel penis. Me advise him, provincial police commander on the ground. That by got one blah, big blah, fight back him up. It's an ongoing fight. So you me got enough troops. Thank you, long uh, government blow me. He got 114 soldiers currently serving in Enga. He got close to about 200 over policemen in Stablong, Enga. Me been giving this player intel, long provincial police commander. Now me took this player and by big club fight, so ready long this player. Unfortunately, Mr. Acting Speaker, unfortunately, only no wake up. Now, this reaffirms my call all the time. My Prime Minister, my government. Do I have to be, uh, you know, the person with a degree sitting in this parliament? Or a rocket scientist to keep on telling this parliament and this nation? that there is a crisis. The crisis is law and order. It's about eight years I've been saying the same old thing. Yes, plenty money there now, you may talk to. That's all it has been coming. You leader, you must look, look. You see the situation. I keep on saying we are going to lose this country, and some of you think I'm a mad man. If you don't have order, if there is no respect for authority, I can endorse what Governor Baird is saying. We won't have a country. We honorable members won't be here, sitting here, enjoying privilege as members of parliament. We have to make sure this country survives. The country is stable. 
Yes, now Olenya is planning in die. But look at what has been happening in the whole country. People are numbers. People are not going to fight. You know what cross. Over some people, islands come down, Pini. Say, one kind. We have the same challenges. We mustn't talk about economy and all these big things that we are talking about. Let's give security to our people first. Security. This country will only survive if you have got Hoda. People me look at this life. I've been managing these things forever. For my 26 years in office, law and order is an issue for me every year. That is why I've been calling on my government, the former prime minister, my own brother, the Honorable Peter O'Neill, couldn't even listen to me too. Now my own brother, the Honorable James Marab is not listening to me. I don't have to be too, or some ask, too smart in this parliament to tell you what I see. From experience, I'm telling you people. I had managed. My job is to talk peace, tell people not to fight. But where is the instruments of government doing the job? How much time me to you plan over around the police force in this country? Don't tell us you have a police force when you don't have one. Goodness. Some time I have a proposal blow me too, I have easy one. Kiss him on the line, he can help you mean that. Build him up this police force. Blow me. It is so important. You must realize that. All the government agencies in this country are important, but police is so important. Police is the force of, uh, is the face of government. We can sit here and pass all the laws we want. But if the, the body that's entrusted with enforcing police is not effective, you can talk to your government as a union government. You can talk all day here in parliament, but all man by lap law you outside of this parliament. Because you can't enforce it. <clears throat> so all this boils down to these agencies of government, law and justice sector. We have to improve them. So I want to endorse what the governor, governor for ECB has said. Let's be serious. Let's be serious, please. In this city, we all have our family and relatives here. How secure are they? Can they go to the shops without worrying about their safety? If not, in this national capital, <clears throat> we have a serious problem. So once again, on this occasion, over my dead body up there, how many deaths have occurred? I want to ask my government and the minister for police to please appreciate my proposal. It's not rocket science. If you people don't have a strategy, hire one already. We are so close to Australia. Our security is important to Australia. I'm only calling Australia on this floor all the time because they can give us the manpower and the number of manpower we want to finally get a culture of policing right. If you, if you send, like the Prime Minister said today, send 500 to the police college. When they come back after, after graduating, passing out, if they go to the districts, who is a mentor there? Who is a police officer who is going to mentor these young people? I've had experience three, four years ago. When 37 came to Wabe, they lasted only two weeks. In two weeks, they looked like all, all the old police and woman anyway. Kiss him strategy blow me here, please. Old man blow me over in there. Huh? By me kiss him big name on this floor. No, I, this is like a three bucks big name. And I won't be part of the strategy because I can make it work. Me blow area. Enga province is a least developed area. Last place, last province to have been declared a province in this country. And my vision has always been to make it a progressive province like every other province. And I always knew that if I don't get law and order right, and I can't make it. Simple as that. So now look at me, black, this is bad name long. Long, that's a problem, this is bad name, yeah. 
One tribal fight and you have 50 deaths. Yeah, man. I'm recording. Police right from a bomb long uh, Gaza. 50 man in Oindelo one by time. But Papua New Guinea, one by tribal fight one day. Now he got record. So me ask him, government, me, please. I have said it. I have got no grudges against any one police officer or anybody. What is right for the country? We have got to say it out without fear or favor. I am saying to my own government and the parliament here that the police force and the law and justice sector needs a big shake up, big assistance so that we can get it right and give our people the security that they want. Provincial uh, Member Enga, your 10 minutes has expired. Thank you. I think I've said enough. Thank you very much. Uh, Uh, Minister for Health. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Assistant Speaker. Uh, Lord Islavinu, not taking me like also taking this time now. Talk so long. Minister Lumipla, Honorable uh, Jimmy Ogoro, now people blame long. Usino Bundi, now people of Medang. One black group minister, I'm losing life. Me plow people long. Wabe to me plow. Talk sorry, come on, all family belong them, all people belong them. Now, especially all leaders uh, representing Medang long flock. Assistant Speaker, we also recognize him that. Talk thank you long. Governor Blomby 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 bring him up this la debate so he can discuss him this la very important issue. Assistant Speaker, me, before me come to Parliament, me work as a doctor. Now, time he woke up some doctor, he got implanted sick. Me plus I treat him. Now, one plus sick came, a name Lord is like sick, I'm sick diabetes. Now, sick diabetes, I will call him systemic illness because time I'm come up, no blood is obvious, remember, I spread go long, over up. But then, I'm some manifest long, very vulnerable areas, like heart, like kidney bleeding. Also, for some man, I'm developing so that's where I'm manifest. But you know, minimum, I'm sick, I'm come up long up. I'm sick, I'm stuck inside the system. But I manifest all vulnerable areas long body. Now, long this love, you know, I feel the same, I feel the same, long stand up long, a flow of parliament, long talk talk, long all narrow leaders who are placed long all stop all right. And me reflect him, give him bad reflection on me, or say, me, one man, where me come talk, talk, nothing, I me no make him due diligence from me, no place. Big place, I me come, me no feel, or say, me got him this mandate now, long talk, talk, long give me as a government, because obviously what, what has transpired over the last couple of days and come up long, place for me. But nonetheless, <clears throat> or say, me make him talk, picks up in this. What has happened? is a symptom of a bigger problem we have in this country. And we must not take it lightly. And I've been saying it for a very long time in cabinet, and I'm saying it again on this floor. Law and order is one of the most important enablers that will see a country develop forward in terms of economic development, in terms of the, all the other uh, social uh, services. Human beings are social animals and have evolved with a natural, nat natural uh, tendency to live in social units. Huh? In order to operate successfully, these units or societies have had to develop ways to organize and regulate themselves for the benefit and security of their members. And as a result, various forms of government, like the one we have, have evolved. In order for these societies to live safely, and in order citizens have to surrender, some of their rights and liberties to their government of choice. Yes, These concessions are made in a democratic process called election, where a society as a whole form an agreement called a social contract with the mandated lead leader and thereafter a legitimate government on which the authorities have vested their rights. 
this sovereign authority of government must be strongly enforced to ensure these rights are protected. Under the terms of this social contract, our citizens, Mr. Speaker, have granted us the government the authority to exercise those rights on their behalf for the benefit of society as a whole. <clears throat> this essentially gives the state monopoly to the use of force, whether violent or otherwise. This agreement is detailed in our formalized constitution, Mr. Speaker, detailing the powers and responsibilities of the government and the rights of the citizens. Mr. Speaker, what we see now is a total breakdown of this arrangement, of this law and order, indicating a total disintegration in the social contract where both parties have failed. The citizens' failure lies in usurping functions that they've formally considered or surrendered to the government by taking law into their own hands and setting their own standards for what they deem as justice, essentially breaking the state's monopoly on the use and dispensation of authority and force. The government's failure is not exercising appropriate discretionary authority in exercising force, in the use of force, under what otherwise are deemed necessary in prevailing circumstances like the one we have in Wabeg now. Law and order is the most important prerequisite for the development and economic growth of any nation. If we as a government fail to curb the rise in law, lawlessness, there's simply no way our nation will grow. Numerous literatures and studies done by all the leading financial and growth and development institutions throughout the world have presented in incontrovertible evidence to support this. In fact, law and order issues are a symptom of a government that is losing control. We have a sacred responsibility to protect the lives and properties of our people, and it should be our first and foremost priority. Now, the recent violent tribal fights in Enga have arisen from two fundamental reasons. One, election-related, and the other, the consumption of alcohol. These fights have escalated due to people's lack of trust, of respect in the government and the institutions of state that are mandated to solve law and order issues. Basically, people realize in their anguish and pain that losing a family member, that justice will be very slow, protracted, and in some cases, not exacted. There is a growing disenchantment and disillusionment of the government and its ability to deliver on the social contract through the expeditious execution of justice. Mr. Speaker, there is a growing lack of trust in the institutions of state that deal with law and order and has given rise to the recent escalation of law and order issues in the country, more so in my province. It is clear that many ordinary Papua New Guineans have little faith in either the efficiency or the fairness of the formal justice system we have. There is popular perception of a widening gap between law and justice. They believe there is two sets of law in this country, one for the ordinary disenfranchised citizens and one for the elite and upper class. There is very evident as the law and order cases in, is rising exponentially because people would rather take law into their own hands and in their minds exact vindication that is just then wait on a system they consider corrupt, elitist, and convoluted. In this respect, Mr. Speaker, the deficiencies of the present system relate as much to lack of legitimacy as opposed to lack of institutional capacity as we fervently portray. I believe the lack of legis legitimacy is the biggest problem we face as a government today than ever before. Our forefathers lived happily despite occasional altercations as their process of dispute resolution was sacred and had a lot of integrity. Members of the tribe knew they would be given fair and timely justice. This is the same everywhere today in the more civilized and mature democracies. Justice, to remind all of us, has three components. Penalization according to law and then only before an ordinary law. Equality before the law and the fairness of laws. To end my debate, Mr. Speaker, we have to be very truthful in our intentions. We must be pure 
in the dispensation of our mandates. Everything we do must be to serve the interest of the people, whilst law and order at its very root may be from disengagement of people in meaningful employment or otherwise needs our economy to grow. Economy will grow when we have law and order. They are intertwined in a vicious cycle where one feeds the other. Therefore, as a starting point, we need to fix one and the other will come. Law and order is what we have in our hands right now. We had a judge, Mr. Speaker, to end my speech today, my debate today. We had a judge by the name of Justice Ellis, Graham Ellis, who was in anger between the years 2006 and 2010. During those four years, anger enjoyed one of the most peaceful times in its entire history. One man, one judge. Cases were dispensed at extraordinary rate. People saw justice in its true colors, and he was respected and revered. He walked the streets even after dispensing what people deemed as very severe penalties on people. However, one fateful morning news came that the judge's contract was not to be renewed. Mothers lined the streets in the morning crying and protesting, but to no avail, Mr. Speaker. The very day he left, the nights were filled with drunken brawls, people breaking bottles on the streets, altercations, and the rise of law and order in anger. <clears throat> what seemed like a dream ended that fateful day. To those who had a hand in his removal, damned be to you and your people. This is a true story of one man, not a system, one man. I repeat, one man doing his job honestly, bringing peace to an entire province. The biggest issue I see today, Mr. Speaker, is not an issue of capacity. It's an issue of legitimacy. The people don't trust us anymore. What we see in Enga is a simple problem arising from a drunken ball. But all man them. If they don't take law into their own hands, justice will be delayed. And justice delayed is justice denied. So they resort to the avenue they, they know best. Mr. Speaker, that's why law and order problem go bigla or country blow bigla. My plea today, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> is that let's restore the sanctity of our institutions. You may bring him some black and sacredness back to all institutions of state. Yes. Police is being highly politicized. Justice Honorable system obviously Minister. has lost its sanctity. If it means we need to bring people and form an oversight committee, people with esteemed, you know, reputation throughout the region, you will bring them all come and allow them all form an oversight committee and let them assess the performance of our law and justice sector, Mr. Speaker. Because me feel him, in the field of medicine, we Honorable do our audits Minister, every morning, I, Mr. Speaker, I, just two minutes. May I interrupt Every you morning, in ten minutes. Me plus, I make him worried. Has Long. expired. In this country, it seems that certain institutions, like the judiciary, like the police, they are beyond reports. They have fenced themselves into an elite enclave, beyond reports, and it's hard to get accountability from them. That's the problem in this country now. We need to restore the sanctity of our institutions. Therein, all man by looking more same, all man make him walk right, now by trust him, now by believing government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister of Police. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I rise on this occasion to contribute to this. Uh, to this debate, and before I do, uh, Acting Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker, me like firstly, giving bell story blow me, go along all families, now mamas, now children, long Enga province, long situation where me come up, me talk big bell story blow me, on behalf of my people of Bougainville. Since the crisis, no good plenty blue plating or awesome. 
This la situation of Bougainville and Mipinis. There are certain areas of Bougainville that are experiencing currently what we have experienced up in Enga. Particularly in South Bougainville, we have a place called Kono. But the leadership on the ground to only look long, look, look long. How long only can create him? This la walk boom, long address him. This la prevailing issue, long Kono. I think speaker, me too. Again, on behalf of my family, me, na people, me, giving bill, sorry, blow me, long people, long usno bundui, long minister, blow you, me, long education, long untimely passing, long em. Now, before me contribute on this like, debate, me like you see one like, terminology where me resonate. Long me, long time me meet him. Minister blow you me long. Education, late to guru. I say talk talk all the time, look cabinet, I say talk all same long me. You can be qualified, but not educated. And one like, profound statement straight where me say still today. I must have a question in me, long thing, thing, now how you meet the day inside one mindset blue you me? How system blue you me, me create him this la, thing, thing, na talk, talk, blong him. And that is what inspired him to make a lot of reforms inside long education system. <coughs> I think, speaker, this la law and order system, na story, law, law and order situation blue you me, long country. You can almost draw correlation with the instability of government. 49 years, 12 prime ministers, and 19 police commissioners. If we are to have a prosperous environment, then we need to have consistency and stability in government and those that we've given power to become custodians of the law by which we all dwell in or operate in. Acting Speaker, and I concur with our good Honorable Minister Lino, Our systems have deteriorated, and again, why has it deteriorated? Because of instability and the loss of trust of the system, culminating into lawlessness. Acting Speaker, while I identify that, this government since 2019-20 made a very strong statement that law and order was going to be the priority. The Mapa Rosa government made a strong statement and backed it up to address the deteriorating system, also observing and incorporating some of the recommendations such as international intervention into our policing system. But changes do not happen overnight, I think, Speaker. It needs continuity and stability. This is the first time this government has been able to maintain stability in the force by ensuring that the commissioner has a second term in office so that we can sustain and stabilize and improve on the interventions. Acting Speaker, you may talk, talk long, increasing policemen. We are stretched in all means for our policing in the country. 6,300 to almost 12 million people, Mr. Speaker. We can feel the impact right now. And this government is addressing it. We just started recruitment 
It will take 12 months, Acting Speaker. And we're doing that. We'll have 500 officers coming out. We've reached out to the Australian government to intervene through the Australian Policing Partnership. We have professionals now working with all our new cadets at Bomana. We've also sent out a memo including a job description for 60 policemen of the Commonwealth nations to come in and fill in in our middle management, which is one of the biggest challenges within our organization. So it's out there, Acting Speaker. We are addressing, and it will take time for this to, to, to come into fruition. We need stability, Acting Speaker, for, for, for our country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, me talk thank you straight long. Uh, me recognize him all policeman, uh, military users, tap on tap, help him. Good luck, Governor. Blue me and tap long enga. Mr. Speaker, by me bring him domestic terrorism act to come into the parliament too. Uh, hopefully this week. Now, you may declare him, please, enga awesome uh, western end, hella, enga, now southern highlands, awesome special policing zone. Na law by karma pi long making work long all and meet domestic terrorism act and that will help us uh, in empowering our policemen and our uh, defense force who are now operating in an interoperability command uh, head by our commissioner mr speaker so we are having challenges but this government the marpe rosa government is implementing uh, strategies by which uh, it has been neglected for many, many years by a previous government. So, Mr. Speaker, we, we don't have all the answers that we can give you overnight, but only through stability and continuity, then we can see change. Attitude and mindset does not change overnight. Attitude and mindset does not change overnight. You need to sustain it. You need to repeat it continuously. And Mr. Speaker, about me and him debate, let me talk so long. More than value, me talk talk long. Him, long mindset. That's why me opening statement, let me want them. You can be educated, uh, but not, you can be qualified, not educated. It stems back from our Christian values. Now me how much them this like government, my Peroso government, you me declare him, you me and talk long, talk talk long, Papa God. Am talk so by strong in mindset, let you me. We need that. That is the foundation of every person in this country. And by Bani Sim, you mean local about blue you mean inside the country blue you mean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister for Forest. <coughs> order, order. Uh, <coughs> Minister Forest. Order. As a Thank chair, you, I've given a... Uh, uh, me understanding, Mr. Uh, Moline, me like working with the debate, blow me to law site plus speak, you know, son of a minister. Me lost him title, blow me as a minister. I want to speak on behalf of the people of CPIC too. I'm, I'm represented by the people of Angoram. I am not... You know, I want to tell this, as my good uh, honorable speaker. We all are elected into this parliament because of our people. Not because me come now, current ministry of plus Angoram na come. So don't, please. In debates like this, it doesn't matter whether you are minister or whatever. This is our house that we have to maintain some decorum. So blood time all man no place but talking me. You may come up pro or pro. Member not fly, what is your point of order? Uh, thank you, Assistant Speaker. My good uh, uh, Minister of Forest, enough law and me make him debate block every lot of sing out, sing out. Thank you. Uh, member not fly, uh, your point of order is in order. Uh, Minister, you Mr. Speaker, I think maybe me sing out or me talk talk strong. But this law is a mouse law fight, he talk talk law defending. But we feel sorry. But before me talk talk, me la talk sorry through. Uh, no, this law, so it's me raising voice for me. But uh, 
Me too, like it seems like time on behalf of people blind. I'm not talk sorry, lo. late brother minister. We plus tell him talk sorry, go family, no people long. Uh, we no bundi. Uh, he's up to law. Give him legal contribution, blow me law. One of them, good player, this the country where one of them, alternate way, me black and pine him, law, help him all. Uh, this is a common issue where entire country is facing. Law in order, and me plow gonna face him. Me plow to law civic, face him, this law something. All the problems we are facing. But what is the way forward? How do we address it? We can blame the minister or we think that the government has all the answers, but collectively we put our hands together, our heads together, because it is all about the mindset of our person. Everything happened, before the thing happened, the guy has to make a, or some sit down, uh, pass him talk talk or walk him think thing, and it is the head that controls that person whether to go and fight or not to fight. Or have him boost type na cut him man or no god. Or have him gun and shoot him man or no god. Or plus from me plow using wire catapel. Kind of something. And it's happening. I see this happening in my province and uh, my good governor on the other side. We know we suffered a good Samaritan to go out and get kiss him, help him no line. Now plenty of patient we come now recorded long flight blood is labalus. It's all about wire catapel. These things is happening all throughout Papua New Guinea. So me like put him on some suppose this like issue and legacy issue name is stop over time. We just came in. This is one in Parliament now we miss it out. You play it, continue. And long plot time in come. And these issues are approaching like our good governor for uh hang I said, I'm also making some law proposals plan, put him in come, uh, one of them recommend him. Those are the things where we can look and find ways to support the government collectively. You may all get out on them. You may put him thinking one time, support him governor. Uh, government, supporting Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, support the government, the way forward for our people. Let's find a way forward. And I think, <coughs> long old brother, lose him life on top of up, and one war of people, we feel for them. Yeah, yeah. And we have to find ways, like lo, me, me, but trying to contribute to this debate or something. One of them wrote, but me black can stop him, all ammunition, or gun, or something like that. Me black look at them, entry and me come look at them. Me too, me, but partly blame, because entry and CP2, my district, coming up. And things like that. So how do we put some measures or protection of this law area so this type of things, how many human guns don't move in those areas? Or what measures we can take as a country, as a government, law you mean ban him gun in the country? Kind of thinking of them. So me like contribute to the me talk sorry, law people blowing on what happened. And I'm yeah. I'm me talk sorry to speaker, to the opposite side, to all the Senate Lomi making me raise his voice, but please, me respect you, law brother, or leaders. You back a time no talk talk. Me losing more same. Floor open, but please support the government and let's find a way forward for our people and what we can put in place to support him. Ben. Government lo one of them best way. Ben. Let me be like ben. kiss him just like issue. Burning guns ben. and one blah blah me got thing thing land. Now blah looking way all ammunition shall come land. Me bless stop him. Where well, me contribute to this law something. So thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you for giving time to me. Uh, opposition leader. Thank you. Uh, as you say, speaker, for the opportunity to meet the law portion. I think the law portion got plenty of uh, man like talk talk now. Please give me the opportunity. First of all, we like talk thank you to the governor uh, Morbid. The new current Mr. Pepper Camp. Uh, suppose government in a looking motion and number one priority now put him inside law Pepper of the Tete. We like talk thank you to you look him and priority. Now, on behalf of the people of Kiruna, good enough, now my people of Millen Bay, me like talk thank you. Now, you look him important, place of paper. Now, put him today. Thank you. Let me qualify myself first before I speak uh, on the subject, and especially uh, law, people of law anger. I know uh, plenty blame me, law here, law this house, we are honorable people. And uh, let me qualify myself that. Uh, before I speak on, on, on the subject, lo and lo Enga, a few uh, months ago, I was talking to Governor Ipatas. And I told Governor Ipatas, I said, Governor Ipatas, my daughter, my mm -hmm. adopted daughter, my firstborn in the family, is from Enga. She's from Enga. When she lost her parents, I took her and cared for her. She's a big girl now. She's about 26 or 27 now. 
And so I qualified myself that I want to talk for peace in anger. Mr. Speaker, inside your country, blame me. This uh, uh, law and order has eaten, has eroded the uh, foundation of society. It's eaten into the foundation of society. I'm destroying plant is eating. I'm destroying lives blow all young plant man, young plant You know, a few years ago and months ago, you may have him story blow Milim Bay province. And Prime Minister rightfully said it uh, this morning. Places like Milim Bay province never had issues with law and order. Until the culture of guns came into Milim Bay province. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, like you mean must serious when the Minister for Forest said <clears throat> we must find some way to ban guns in this country. Why? What's so difficult for us to do that? There is a report by uh, Singer report that is still gathering dust in this house. It's still waiting for tabling law, house blaming. The Prime Minister and the Cabinet, please, you may carry this paper come and look at the recommendations in the uh, paper. Yesterday, reading yesterday's paper, Single Rock said there are more than 200 recommendations in there. Maybe this uh, recommendations can assist in this house, law, find him some way forward. <coughs> to deal with some of our issues in this house. A year ago, I spoke about the eroding of morals. This uh, institution about family, how do we strengthen the, the families? The respect of elders inside law. Uh, education curriculum, blame me. How can we reintroduce some of the things that some of us who grew up in the 70s, I may look like a young man standing here, but I'm older than some of you seated here. I'm telling you. Yeah. Some of us went to school in the 70s. Yeah. He's saying size 28, so I'll accept that. Yeah. But, uh, Miles law talk pilai law the house. We need to seriously look at the curriculum that we have. You may have some some something inside the curriculum where there is this is a curriculum and come up with some. You must kiss him save it as all. Save law come na him one plus one na reading book. That's all you may have some discipline inside law the book. We must embrace discipline in our education system. We must. Now, teacher ended up smacking, picking in the classroom. Ah, yeah, sorry. No time blow me. Lapun man blow me, who was a teacher himself, must kill me in order for me to get out and become a better person. Tete, students cannot be smacked. You smack him, one blow, and run, go police, or arrest him, you. Osama, Mr. Speaker. That's a contribution from me and plenty. That's all. By me cutting go down, no. Now, plus something where you mean my serious. Man, just the other day, we brought a paper here. Now, you mean yet, no parliament, you mean talk, talk, no Christian, Christianity inside, no here. Now, me talk. Me been talk, me talk. <clears throat> what is the definition by me putting the like, word Christianity? It's a serious question that I put to this house. You mean must seriously consider him. Why you may call him you mean this country Christian country? Now thank you, uh, Minister Pillar Niningi, for bringing that paper. But we must identify why you may call him you mean a Christian nation. Because Christianity comes with its principles. 
Christian principles. We must live by those principles. You listen, Mr. Loyupla. I know the Prime Minister the other day while he was talking, my uh, good Prime Minister, he said issues of killing were good enough to where 22 people were murdered, were killed. And true. But my situation in Kiruna is not the same as Los Ampla other places do. I'll, I'll qualify that. One, the people who were killed in my electorate, I got on the plane the next day and flew in. I want them dealt with my own issues. I want them dealt with the local community. My presence alone brought peace on the island. And today on my island, we are working on reconciliation and putting these things behind us. We must find a way forward here in this house, please. Missora lo mama blo upper highlands. Missora lo beginning lo upper highlands. Missora lo daughters blo mi lo upper highlands. Be blo mi karai because they cannot move freely in their own society. I wouldn't deny that tribal warfare is a part of our culture. They've been part of our culture for thousands of years. But they have reasons why they go for tribal wars. They have seasons. Now, Mr. Speaker, I would like to recommend one thing. And uh, our people are cultured in the, in, into these things. Now, you, you mean, now, Lord is like government, how can we force, how can government use its force to come in and cut the culture that is not good for this nation? Our people are cultured here. <clears throat> Suppose me hold him down, me big man. Suppose me hold him, this group of people, me man. How do we come in and cut that culture? How do we come in and come through? When the water is flowing at high speed coming down, the only way you can cut it is by digging now plus side so that water can go on the flow blend by cut. How do we come in and cut through the culture now, rousing inside the man's mindset, no people blame me. My dear Prime Minister and Minister for Defense, let me recommend one thing. If it has to mean that we get our forces up there to the upper highlands and pack them there, whether it's 300 men or 400 men, we pack them up there and they get down there with the police force and stay there for the next four years or five years or even 10 years, <laughs> and get into the culture and change the mindsets of our people, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I'm thankful <clears throat> that we have spoken about record budgets. Record budgets. Those record budgets must be translated into some uh, goodness for our people. We cannot be talking about record budget, record budgets while they continue to hire vehicles and spend half of the budget on higher vehicles. We cannot be talking about record budgets after record budgets when they're spending too much money on renting houses. The police force must translate the record budget into something that our people can see, not talk about them. Police walk in work black. Honorable opposition leader, your 10 My minutes time is up. Is Thank expired. you. Finally, let me take this opportunity. Uh, me plan opposition go Pay him respect to the Honorable uh, Ugoro Pinis. Now, on behalf of the opposition, too, may like to thank you all and uh, all people. Allow me to pay him respect to the Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, I recognize the member Lagai from the chair. Thank you, uh, Assistant Speaker. Me like to contribute to uh, the debate. Uh, first of all, before I Go on with the uh, discussion of the issue uh, from the uh, people of Lagaib and Pogra. I, w I wish to pass my sincere uh, condolences to the people of Usino Bundi. Uh, Mibla, to Lucim leader of Mibla last November in uh, late Honorable Maso Karibe, long member of the Pogra, and Mibla Philips, like then uh, Mibla Philip now long, there's a time, so sorry, true. Uh, one time slam, we don't think it through long, or leaders will be long. Uh, parliament, na 
outside Liverpool partners, you blah stop at the middle of people blowing yeah. Thank you through you blah stop at the middle of me the time you blah boom him every last uh, Sunday. I uh, want him slow I'll I'll just get to the uh, issue of the trouble fight that happened uh, cost him life last Sunday. So in Enya and the uh, Upper Islands, trouble fight is uh, uh, it's not new to us. It has been there and it's still ongoing. Uh, it has been there before. Uh, I think Upper Islands, most of the parliamentarians before they were born to it. It was the fight was there. Not this fight, but the trouble fight was there. It's part of our culture. But in this time and era, trouble fight has evolved over time. Now we need a different approach to address this issue. We are the the issue of police force. Like we're going to a police station, laying a complaint, and then arresting a a, a, a criminal. That's that's not working in in my part of the uh, province. We don't go to police station to lay complaints to arrest a murderer. We don't do that anymore. We only go and get policemen to uh, mediate. I'm good, blah. I'm good, blah. You okay, Muslim? So I'm right, blah. I'm by you okay, compensation. Me blah by Karim Golong, mediation team long. By blah, she don't in place good. So our approach of addressing law and order in my part of the uh, province has changed. So. We don't. We no longer need the uh, the current normal approach of law and order uh, in our province. So we need new approach. We need, like, uh, member for Vanimo Green, the good governor of um, Isipik, and my governor and uh, member for Wabeg has recommended. We need some of those new approaches, not the whole uh, system of uh, governance in Kenya. For example, the last killing, it's an ongoing trouble uh, fight. It's been going there for the last three to four years, and the killing, the deaths are uh, totaling up to two to 300 deaths already. The 50, it happened on one day only, but it's still ongoing. So how do we address that? We have never addressed it. So if we send a new PPC, for example, or if we send the police commissioner two times, three times to Enya, it will never solve the problem that we are facing now in Enya. So what's happening here, we need a different approach. Maybe we look, we look into the uh, single report of, of why we are supplying, why we have a lot of guns in Enya now, or in the upper islands. Or we need to uh, revisit the Trouble Fight Act. Or we have to create another department in between the police and uh, Department of Army, where people by look, 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 trouble fight, especially concentrated along upper islands where people are fight because people are fight now, plus back up, people are come long, plus people are. Old man by runway long, hang up by come long, stop again, and causing problem again. All by go long, lay long, causing problem lay. All by come long, put most people long, causing problem lay here. This is a national issue. And we must give special pr preference to the upper islands where problem you come now, stop now, land. Okay, uh, that's my first. Second, a uh, man or 15, and I didn't confirm the number, but the, the people who died last Sunday, ML1, one attack will make him long. The neighboring uh, tribe will be in fight, fight stop lane. But all man and place man, all know a gun, all know a bullet, all fight now, stop, number, number. But there are people in this city, and in, in Lay and what must be Motak and Goroka, people are sending money. People are buying bullets, guns. They are hiding here in this city. So to stop the problem, we have to cut the head of the snake. And we have to hunt them down here in the city to stop the problem up there. We can go up there and stop it. I'm all trouble man. All seem trouble go bus, idle bus. You put a pine mall of bus. How about you go find him? I'm all blessed man. But you mean by man who said, making transactions for year long, city, we're selling money, go along, fund him all along, or we go fight game. If we do, do didn't do it, uh, if we don't do anything now, he will go fight game tomorrow. Man who says, selling money, go and stop it. It's still out there, here in the city, and among us. That's number two. Number three, Enya now 
needs a state of emergency. I, uh, I request the government, NEC, please give us a state of emergency to address this. On, not only this, we, are, we have carried ongoing fighting, like I program everywhere in Enga. We have to declare Enga a state of emergency now so that we will solve these issues once and for all. And under those, we will address the other issues that I've mentioned. Uh, Anton Nusla, thank you through asking speaker. Uh, uh, member for Wanimo Green. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Me too. Uh, me like uh, joining him on uh, Lapal Speaker, so only talk to give opinions. Mr. Assistant Speaker, all fellow leaders, fellow Papua New Guineans, land is something in the right the country, believe me. They got big like, moral decay. Lawlessness has been widespread throughout the country. They got total breakdown, no values, no you mean, no societies, you may stop no end. Mr. Assistant Speaker, security and protection, the safety of citizens, you mean, the number one priority of any government. Number one, security, safety, and protection. After security comes the health and education. Any one government of the day must guarantee safety and security and protection of our people. And that will also guarantee the protection of our investment partners, development partners who are coming and investing in our country. Without which, we will lose our country. Our, fo our forefathers, the founding fathers, wanted our country to be God-fearing, prosperous, and free. We are heading 50 years, and we are not getting there yet. We are going back. And whilst I'm on that, I want to pass my sincere condolences. Online Louis Milon, Wapen Amanda, all seeking tribe, we only kill him all the ambush. Governor Blong, Benga, Member Blong, Wapen Amanda, Member Blong, Wabek, Member Blong, uh, Pogera, Member Blong, uh, Kandep, Ambum Kombiam. All people blame me like I talk big, I talk sorry on behalf of all people who live in the Green River. I only one time talk sorry to all family who live in the Green River. Taripori districts, Naloela province, where all plenty of families too, only losing all plenty of loved ones. Not this like kind, same kind, tribal war. Mr. Assistant Speaker, me raising specific questions asked there. No Prime Minister, because me like him answer. No, how by me deal one time security situation of country, believe me. Maybe it needs a bipartisan approach. Maybe government needs to sanction a bipartisan approach. And be, pick among the leaders. I'm available to give advice and to be part of that team to make recommendations on how we deal with this situation in our country. It's a national issue. I'm not issue for Prime Minister Tasso. I'm issue for him all the How about him deal with the business situation? The root cause of the problem, the tribal wars today are not like before. The tribal wars are now using high-powered factory-made guns. We need to go down to the root cause of it, and I agree with a member for Pogera. Or Ligam. 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 Member for Lycat. I, I agree with him. We got to go down to the root cause of it. And that's why I'm, I asked about the force capability. I asked about the policy. What is the policy of the government of the day? What are the plans of the government? What are the strategies? Police minister need to sit down with the defense minister. Police commissioner 
need to sit down with the defense commander. The police intelligence, the military intelligence need to, to sit down with the, the director general, with the national intelligence organizations. We need to gather all this intelligence. We need to collaborate them. Then we will be able to go down to the root cause of this problem. If they were using only bows and arrows, we would not have lost. And, the, and from the figures that I'm getting from intelligence on the ground is going up to 70. 70 people. The governor of Oenga said that he had intelligence that there was going to be an attack. He informed the authorities on the ground. Nobody reacted. That tells me that our defense force, our police, is not ready. There is no force readiness. And force readiness means when you get a piece of information like that, you do your own investigation. And they would have stopped it if they acted upon the information that was provided by the good governor. But they didn't. So that means they were sleeping. That means our force is not ready. I haven't seen police and military on a combined training. We send them up there. They're just running around, fraternizing with the local community. If you fraternize for a good cause for getting intelligence information, that's all good. But if you're just fraternizing to enjoy yourself, to socialize, you're already compromising the security of our country. It's a serious issue, very serious issue. I agree with a member for LIGA that the leaders of this country are actually financing the tribal warlords, the tribal groups. Where are the guns coming from? Is it coming from Daru? Is it coming from Telephoming through Strickland? Is it coming from Vanimo? Or is it being supplied from Port Mosby? Or is it coming from the police armory and the military armory? These are things that we need to establish, and it can only be done through proper intelligence. It can only be done through proper intelligence. But the government needs to provide that direction. It's not about, oh, we have to leave the police commissioner there for next five years, for the next 10 years, for the next 15 years. No. It's about the leadership that we provide now. It's not about consistency in the office of the police commissioner or in the office of the prime minister. If you can provide that leadership from the word go, then you will change the course of the country. You will change the course of the country. You can have a prime minister there for 10 years, but if he doesn't provide the, the good leadership, this country is going to go into chaos like what we are experiencing today. Do we have intelligence capabilities? Does our police and military have the equipment necessary? Do they have the necessary intelligence capabilities? Do they have the equipment to monitor? I say no. The monies that we give to those organizations are spent on air cars and not in trying to ramp up and beef up the training, we need a force that's little. We, didn't, we don't need a big army. We don't need a big police force. But if we have a force that's little, ready to execute at any one time, I haven't seen any ready reaction force in this country. We deploy troops to El Ella, to Southern Islands, to Enga, or to West New Britain. There's no training going on. Maybe it's about time government needs to change, come up with a new policy. I made recommendation and I told the Prime Minister, why don't we establish the Ministry of Homeland Security and Department of Homeland Security, where you have the top-notch policemen, top-notch military, 
from the intelligence and immigration, and you put everybody together in this particular department, and they are there, and you form a SWAT team, or if not, you form a paramilitary. They are readily available to execute on the word go. If we do not act now, we are already losing our country. We are already losing our country. Honorable Member Bonnie McGreen, your debate time has expired. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ashton Speaker. Just to finish off, I want to support the call by the Governor for Anger that we need to revisit the Enhanced Cooperation Program. Instead of just Australia, we widen it to the Commonwealth countries. And maybe we remove, we remove the humanity part, where Governor Luther Wenger himself challenged it and it was deemed unconstitutional. Maybe we need to revisit it and redo it again if we need to have foreign assistance. So I support the call by the Governor for Anger. Thank you, Mr. Ashton Speaker. Uh, Honorable Member Kopiam. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Me, to me, is an up one big plus seven or seven good plus member blong wa beg him talk talk. Em no one plus nice plus time. No some plus leader also me yet hailing from the province of Enga. No some up plus here na talk talk time. Bless Lumi and Bagara. But me like to thank you through long plenty if law leaders you go past now talk talk pinis. Now good blood thing thing blow you blah. Sindan la here and I am on behalf of the people of Enga. Me like to thank you through law consensus blow you blah that you see this as a national issue more than just a provincial issue from the province that, <coughs> that I come from. Mr. Assistant Speaker, we are indeed deeply saddened and concerned by the unprecedented mass killings that have occurred in Wapenamanda, in the province of Enga. Mr. Assistant Speaker, there is no jurisdiction of any kind for this behavior. During these difficult times, Mr. Assistant Speaker, of sorrow and pain, I pray for the innocent mothers and children who have lost a son and a father and are traumatized. Along with the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, and every other leader, I condemn this in the strongest possible terms. Mr. Assistant Speaker, well, this is a matter of national importance, and the national government must intervene. We must, Mr. Assistant Speaker, we the businessmen, we the elites from Enga must take full responsibility, especially from the affected areas of the conflict zones. Mr. S Assistant Speaker, the churches in my province must take full responsibility and do what churches do best, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Mr. Assistant Speaker, I must also say, we the leaders in the province, we the leaders of the Enga province, must now bow our heads in shame, Mr. Assistant Speaker, and must take full responsibility and work together instead of dividing ourselves to address this. Mr. 
Mr. Assistant Speaker, I must highlight the fact that we have certain decentralized powers for our provinces, and Enga is no exception. Village court magistrates, law and order committees, and advisors in the province. Mr. Assistant Speaker, I think it's about time we must check whether such systems are working or have disconnected with our people and why they have disconnected with our people. On the ground alone, Mr. Assistant Speaker, is the best place to find solutions and peace. Systems that are not working, Mr. Assistant Speaker, must be reviewed, checked, and strengthened. Where is the provincial law and order advisor? Is he doing his job or compromised? Where are the peace mediators? And the village courts in the province? Do we continue to terminate them because they are not political supporters when they're doing their job? These are questions we need to seriously address. Governments on the ground, systems on the ground must not be disconnected. They must stay engaged with the people. When systems are compromised, that makes us vulnerable, Mr. Assistant Speaker, to such situations. What has occurred is an indicator of a weak law enforcement in the province and the country. We all need to come out clear and point to where exactly the problems lie and fix it, Mr. Assistant Speaker. My district, after the 2002 national elections, lost government properties with hundreds of millions of kina, and I am shattered for my people and public servants who fled to seek refuge in an unprovoked attack. At present, Mr. Assistant Speaker, I'm sure the Prime Minister is listening and this time from the floor of Parliament. At present, I have about 5,000 of my people homeless and spread across the country. Mr. Assistant Speaker, amidst this deaths and destruction, <coughs> I stood firm. And with the help of some good leaders in the province and my electorate told my people to flee from the ancestral law and not to retaliate. As I speak on the floor of parliament today, they're scattered across this country. And we only told them to retaliate, Mr. Speaker, because we were then advised by the security forces on the ground that they were unable to provide the needed security, especially for the public infrastructure. Private lives gone, private property is gone. At the same time, the social media and false reports blamed me for the good of political reasons that they wanted to expose. But Mr. Speaker, I thank people for their prayers. I thank my people and I thank God 
that we did not escalate. I said clearly then, Mr. Assistant Speaker, that a lie today will be destroyed by the truth of tomorrow. And today, as I stand before you, Mr. Assistant Speaker, I thank the Special Investigation Unit of the uh, Police Headquarters. Police Minister, take note. On behalf of the people of Kompia Mambum and the displaced 5,000 citizens of my electorate, we sincerely appreciate the fact that you have arrested three criminals already. And I am sure that public servants and leaders alike, should these investigations and the truth come out clear, will be arrested soon. <clears throat> Mr. Assistant Speaker, in Wabenamanda, the frightening images of dead bodies we are seeing is a sad situation that could have been avoided. When there was a ceasefire, where did the Peace and Law and Order Committee go? Why did the provincial government and responsible public servants not intervene? We cannot continue to blame the police and army. Army and police going to volatile regions use higher cars of leaders, sleep in lodges of leaders, and get money and women from leaders. So they are compromised and distracted from their duties. This is the truth of what happens, and the truth has to be told. If we have to get it right, you may not can come almost be in a parliament that you may German about. There is an interesting scenario where a senior politician called defense to pull out and to lend and to let an enemy tribe bend down another village. When this tribal conflict was at its earlier stages, you wouldn't have experienced these deaths if the senior leader called his defense and told them, move out so that that enemy can go and bend that territory down. Honorable member. Mr. Session Speaker. Interrupt you. I no, just humbly ask you to allow me from a province where this problem is so that leaders on the floor of parliament can be able to appreciate the truth so we can find lasting solutions. Honorable member from the chair, I will give you another five minutes. Thank you very much. You are the best assistant speaker since 1992 of my election to parliament. <laughs> thank you, thank you. As I am speaking here, if the defense is out there listening in, I ask you to do the right thing and to do justice by reporting any political leaders that have intervened and interfered with your independent role and responsibility. True. Let the police start dealing with them. If we declare a state of emergency, we blow by giving Mary na money or police, na army na sleepy more law room so that they do our political runs instead of their job to ensure justice is done. Me no talk talk nothing, Mr. Assistant Speaker. But me come no recommendations from me. Ammunition were supplied by senior politicians, public servants, warlords. This law all talk talk come no member blow like I'm talk through. Now you must talk through now. Double defense car, Mr. Speaker, Assistant Speaker, from a very reliable source, from the direct source, sponsored by a senior politician. Double defense car, car and ammunition is gone. I put him logistic blow me so the place blow me by go down. And what about this person who was apprehended at Wapenamanda with all these ammunitions? Where is he and where are the ammunitions? <clears throat> we
We leaders in the provinces are in the thick of things and we are the best ones. On the ground, we must take responsibility. What has happened has happened and it is on us now to take, make sure it does not happen again. Mr. Speaker, I recommend to us as a way forward for a bipartisan committee to look into specifically tribal fights in this country. Mr. Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister and the good ministers, the good new Minister for Defence, the good young Minister for Police. Your government without fail, and this is the truth, has supported the province with security forces. The truth also is, unfortunately, we at the province compromised them. We compromised them. A way forward for you, Mr. Prime Minister, through your assistant speaker. Should you want to declare a state of emergency, should you wish to send more security forces to the province, should you wish to bring in a powerful investigation team, may I say this, that you provide us with a non-compromising leader to lead the security forces, not one that is recommended by politicians from the province so the leader can stay clear of political compromising and influences. That the security forces must operate independently <clears throat> and outside of undue influences in order, in, and in order to do that, may I say, that they come with a sworn, strict code of ethics to conduct themselves when they're in the province. And of course, Mr. Prime Minister, through you, Mr. Assistant Speaker, the security forces must be protected for the use of lethal force. Mr. Assistant Speaker, as I conclude, we mourn for the lives lost and we grieve with the innocent families. We must be genuine and sincere if we are to solve these issues, <clears throat> not come and put a show in Parliament or Port Mosby. May God grant peace to our people of Ovenamanda, to my people of Compiègne, to my people also of Lyada and Kandev, and the province as a whole. This incident must be a wake-up call for provincial leaders as well as the national government. May God grant peace to all of us again. I thank you, Mr. Assistant Speaker. I see that my one minute is now timing down. I really sincerely appreciate you for your patience. Honorable members, the question is that the Minister for Attorney General. Thank you, Assistant Speaker. Thank you, Long Governor, Lord Racing display important issue. Mr. Speaker, most members of Parliament may see us, see me, see me as one of the ministers. Ministers should not talk. No. Member talk talk because I'm I'm Minister Blon Justice. You walk in trouble by come to me. Plenty of time, people talk to Lord Justice, so we must clear him this letter, uh, talk talk. When in something, people make him long. Before me go to go to this land, me like talk sorry, long old people, or lose him life, long old. It's an unfortunate situation, that's all. All, all man make him, all lose him life. So me talk sorry.
Now, too, me like talk sorry again, the family blong. Late. Uguro. All the staff, I was crying, and me talk sorry. I'll say, me one blood brother, blow me next door, and sit down here. It's no longer there. So, me, me talk sorry. Big plus sorry, long. Now, long justice. I passed it. I still you blow working with what you blow support me. No, me talk thank you. You blow member of parliament. Some of the big improvements you may like making. Free structure you may like making. I'm addressing court, addressing law and order. That's all. Also, no, you blow making long and me talk thank you. You blow long. You should see now. Me blow appoint him. So far, long this this year, that's all. No, last year and this year. Government gave him directions, and we like kiss him. Close to 10 black expatriate ju judges come inside. Now, two nationals, too, we like kiss him. Lord, seven months, some people like come, come kiss him, we come inside now. We play thing or same, by system, by improve. And me also, me come long and finish product. That's all. Number one, them start long police. Suppose me not got good black police pros to get us, or not blow money, no stop. And finished product, in on up go straight. Uh, so, um, this is a big problem now. No can think of some, this is a government that's all working, this is a trouble, no cut. It has happened. Over the years, we plan to attend him. Now, we plan to seriously consider him this law. So, this has been accumulated up to come to this part. So, we plan like addressing the talk talk long end. Long tribal fight meeting or same long end. Me long end up too. When the trouble he come, me first man he go long I, I, I go on this area. Me talk talk one them online blow me. Suppose he got smoke come up, he, he got fire long end. Suppose you know kill him this la fire, put him water long end, and bam bam. So partly responsibility also me blah leader he, eh, me blah master blah me me blah yet. Me talk long me yet. <clears throat> In a long time he go finish. All mangi long, uh, long uh, inside the electoral will me. Only one black guard, no police, uh, police guard, and kiss him one black gun. Me hit me, run him, he go, he go in Ablo, me kiss him this black gun and give him back the police. Me black at responsibilities. What have you done? Have you done anything? You talk, talk big and lawyer cross fight, he go, he can. You me, you me cross fight in up. You me must make him take him responsibility long. Blow me play yet. Me play yet again, go now. Solve him this la problem. That's all you mean to walk him. Yes, police he go. I'm as policeman, you sell him go. You know not walking one plus something. Only no serve long cast them way, people are talk to long. That's all. Long tribal fight. Now to tribal fight, you can go through. Because me play sir talk, on is a brook long and is a brook. You know not long brook long, I'm a big play pain. Meaning or some enemy blow you, enemy blow me, you. He don't blow me. Me can go through. So all same name, <clears throat> you mean not go inside and talk. Now to fight this stuff to only the blowing up. Supposed to only go, only don't have kill him. Only the Larry Mull come talk talk. Two plus side one them. And he know, they only no involved a fight. And so common sense, only a court of edicts. Some lady exist up, also behind him. Uh, so me think also Mumbera, you me must take him this responsibility or the members of parliament. We must be serious in what we do. Suppose you mean to talk also, you mean talk police, police. Australian police, white man, you know, seven long one about one about three more light is up. Or Narbla money, long way, long way man, you know, seven. Me play here, seven long one about only stop long end. That's so you me must. At, identify him, you me yet must talk, talk, now identify him. So, responsibility meeting or send him, stop, let me play yet. He come back, let me play. So, suppose leaders, you also, <coughs> one, one leaders, you me yet, you must go to place, but you now, you must talk, talk. You go to place, but you now talk, talk. You do also. Suppose you me make him also, meeting by him, mean, solving, uh, solving problem, <coughs> at least we can attend to this. Uh, so, law and order, and big plus something that's all. And police is not an answer. Answer is with us. 
We, are, we must be serious. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Governor for NCD. That's it. All right. That's it. Uh, thank you, Assistant Speaker, to give me opportunity to contribute to this like, very important uh, debate. Blame me. We uh, acknowledge you, Malgada, contribution that I've made already, very, very good contribution. And um, I want to say this from the outset. Uh, this uh, situation up at Wapenamanda Wabek is unprecedented. Unprecedented, you know, situation that has <clears throat> happened. But sadly, it's not something we did not expect to happen. So at this time, two things we like to talk from the outset. One, you your leaders, government opposition, everyone. We must use this as a defining moment to truly reflect now, thinking long. Leadership blow me, country blow me, institution of state. What we can do when something you may by walking through through now, turn things around. Because me is killing. Suppose you may not take him this moment seriously, and by go west. Because he got crisis. No another crisis, you may get stopped. All police do is tablo crisis. Why me talk police is tablo crisis? Mr. Assistant Speaker, you can look him also. Plant the gun now, bullet the movie going come now. How comes no got line survey? Detect him. Intelligence will a police way. Intelligence will an IO way. How many I know that something is secret? So maybe you may allow him to happen. So I want a crisis. No, no, no. Crisis on institution of state, especially police now. No, no, no. Security apparatus for you, me. You make a crisis too long. Values and ethics for you, me. All these things are happening. Because you may have to, we have not set the foundation right. What are the values that are important to me? As government, as leaders, as parents, as community, you may look at that from the top to the bottom. We are promoting bad values. We are promoting cul culture violence as a way of life, as an acceptable thing. That's why we are coming to this unprecedented situation, Assistant Speaker, Members of Parliament. We can't blame anyone. We blame ourselves. And we use this time to seriously reflect now, think about real corrective measures. Plenty of suggestions come up, but Mr. Assistant Speaker, there's no one solution only. It must be holistic and multiple. And you must come up with it now. You may dedicate the team and prosecute it until things start to change. In the immediate, medium, and long term. Otherwise, when you may fail, I may like go long, uh, talk, talk long. When I'm a member of Vanibo Green, uh, emphasizing this point. Mr. Assistant Speaker, members of parliament, all people by you, me, are We must make this very clear statement where by go out. We cannot accept what has happened in Wapenamada, Wabek. We cannot justify it in any way. We cannot use custom or tradition to say this is a practice been done before. No. The responsibility of us leaders is that we must condemn it. Like member Blong, Ambum Kumbian. Now me like joining them, condemn him. Let's not give some excuse to this type of killing. Whatever circumstance, you may not can accept them on the reasons as a basis for this is a acceptable killing or no. taking away of life. Or, Mr. Speaker, that's what brought us here. This is where me walk the talk, me like talk about moral, now, ethical crisis you may got this time. Mr. Assistant Speaker, over the period of time, you may become indifferent or numb. We've numb ourselves against the taking of one life. And when we do that, 
we are giving permission. We are allowing this type of culture, crime, or unacceptable, horrific behavior to become normalized. And that's what is taking us this far. You become a now, yeah? It's happened over a period of time, not just in the term of Prime Minister James Marabe. Before time you come up now, we didn't stand up and we didn't say no. Importantly, we didn't go after the perpetrators to arrest them and make a fundamental statement that this is not acceptable. Me like reminding you, again, what a member belong, Vanimo Green, he talked. The responsibility of the state, any state, is to protect life and property of the people of, of that state. That's the number one priority, believe me. And I want to emphasize it, Assistant Speaker, it's in our Constitution. Constitution, believe me, you got fundamental rights and qualified rights. <clears throat> there are only a few fundamental rights, one of which is the right to life. Because the law, let me emphasize him, the scarcity of life, the sacredness of life. And then we put in the obligation of the state and the institution of the state to protect life. So over a period of time, he may have long, not living up to that. But the M1 life does only, M2 player. That's what we, why we come this far now, because we are not valuing human life. We think our people are expendable. You may explain in a way that it's a traditional culture of Luyumio. No! Constitution do it to cultures that are repugnant to basic human rights or today's values. We should give it up. So you may not come to here, no parliament that talk, and culture of Louis Mio, uh, tribal fighting and baby of Louis Blanc. No. We are giving excuse. We must stop giving excuse. We must as a state stand up, as a leader stand up, get the institution of the state to do what they're supposed to do, which is to protect life and property of our people. We must guarantee this. And Prime Minister, ministers, you must work together to make sure that this basic fundamental right of people you mean, freedom of people you mean, must be guaranteed. How do I see me by failure? On the 10th of uh, January, we failed here in Mosby. We were caught by surprise. Our own institution of state turned against us. The police and the security personnel. No intelligence and we get all gathering to alert us. And we didn't prep, maybe we didn't take it seriously. Prime Minister, you may work in administrative investigation. Maybe there's a criminal investigation. All I only go on a Brookham store and a you know, cooking store and all this are business premises here. Media is stuff very clear. Some law looks and picks up long all the post him long, social media. Anybody been arrested? No good here. If we don't arrest anyone, and I commend the government to go after the police, some law, you know, giving notice to be terminated. But we must go after some of these perpetrators, those who were involved in the burning and looting. Otherwise, we are enablers, you mean? You mean lead us here? We have the power. We can do something. But we are not doing anything or we are not doing much. And that's why it's giving permission. We are telling them that it's okay, you can do it. Huh? And that's why Anta Blong, Enga Province too. Member Blong, Kombia uh, Mambu, uh, we have not arrested anyone. So it's escalating because we are giving permission to all these local terrorists or warlords or whatever we, we call them to keep on perpetrating or continue because they think they can get away with it. So it comes back to us now. We must use this moment as a defining moment. Some last solution, way forward, on some last speakers in talked about this. We need to come up with a strategy, dedicated one, to look at how we can, you know, really put an end to this. <clears throat> In the long term, Mr. Assistant Speaker, we must go back to early childhood here. Government, we have come up with a policy on early childhood. 
This is the intervention we must make now. Because the children, whether it's in Angao, anywhere in Papua New Guinea, in the upper islands or lower islands or anywhere, once they see violence as a way of life, they see all these killings as acceptable. Hey, Monokshin is a person now, yeah? How are you going to change it? As a speaker and members of parliament. Police cannot intervene and stop and change their behavior. Police minister is talking. It needs the long-term intervention to change the culture and everything. So we must come up with this. Hey, how do you finish? I interrupt you. Your 10 minutes. Uh, Any points we got to stop at my respective time. Honorable Governor, resume your seat. Provincial Member Oro. Thank you. Aston Speaker. Honorable Members, I am the Chairman who is chairing the uh, session. Uh, Honorable uh, Governor Oro. Thank you, Aston Speaker, for giving us, the people of all, the opportunity to say a few words. I join my colleagues in passing my condolences to the family and people who elected their leader, the late Jimmy Uguro, who was our education minister, a wonderful gentleman, a true leader. He always had time to speak to all of us. He responded to texts and messages and made an effort to meet with us and discuss our concerns. So I pass my condolences to the people of Usinobundi and the people of Medang. I, I just have a few points to make in regards to the issue that we are now discussing. All our leaders here have expressed passionately their concerns. They have put proposals forward, great ideas. Mr. Speaker, I hope that these ideas are taken on board and something is actually done about it because we have these debates, these discussions, questions during question time, but I'm often wondering what happens from here on. What does the parliament do with all this information, with all these great ideas, with all these wonderful presentations that are put forward here? Does the parliament just give a facility for us to talk and sometimes express ourselves and we go feeling that we have achieved something? Because if nothing is done with all these great ideas and presentations, then we are really wasting our time here. I would like to suggest that the parliament should have some sort of means by which these ideas are summarized and presented to those who are going to make the relevant decisions so that they can be acted upon. That's what our people would like to see. They'd like to see action take place, you know. Not just us coming here and talking, because we're always accused of talking too much and not doing enough. This is a common accusation, and rightfully so, you know. So to be a functioning parliament, I would like to propose that our parliament have a system in place where all these thoughts and ideas are captured, summarized, and presented to the relevant ministers or to the relevant parliamentary committee chairman. And then it's acted upon from there. And I would like to propose that the Prime Minister have in his office, he has a number of ministers that assist him, perhaps he could have appoint a minister specifically responsible for this, so that action is taken on the presentations made here, on the ideas that are presented here. Because today, for instance, as Governor Parkop has stated, I guarantee that after this, we will become numb to the 50 people that were killed last Sunday. First, it was just one or two, we were shocked. Then three or four, we were shocked, you know? But after a while, we became numb to it. We became desensitized to this. And now, it's so normalized that for us to see this on social media, we're no longer shocked. Yes, we are shocked now because we've never seen dead, body, dead bodies piled up on a truck as we did as starting Sunday. But I guarantee that after that day, after seeing that, we will not be shocked anymore. We will become numb to it. So how do we prevent ourselves from getting to that stage where we are numb and desensitized? We must act on this. I saw a very horrific video just recently, a video that is circulating on social media. A child of, 
a preteen, perhaps around 11 or 12. And he's begging for his life, this young man, this young boy, a child. He's begging for his life. He's saying, please don't kill me. I'm just a child. I'm here to see what's happening. I, I, I'm a son of a leader, he was saying. And on video, they brutally hacked him to death. And then there are now photos of that child, lifeless body, chopped into pieces, being circulated on social media. It's amazing that social media also allows this. Facebook, for instance, they will not allow this on their social media platforms, but they allow it on our social media platforms. It's quite amazing. I'm digressing here, but. Now this image of this poor child, there are videos of those people who brutally murdered this child. What's going to happen to them? Will these people be, up, these murderers, will they be apprehended? Will they be sentenced appropriately to jail? for the crime that they have committed? Brutal murder of a child? We are going to become numb to this too. I mean, there are images of headless bodies killed and beheaded being posted on social media. We are also becoming numb to that. There are videos of women being tied and tortured naked with photos and images of the persons conducting these crimes and we are still not doing anything about it. Immediately we should form a team to go after these particular murderers, for instance, those who are identified and apprehend them, prosecute them. We should create a special jail for this type of terrorists and criminals. And I want to say here that we should stop calling them warlords. Why are we glorifying them? They are criminals. They're murderers, they're terrorists. Create a special jail out in a remote island. Make it happen. We have so much money. But what are we doing with it? Create that special jail where they can be kept there in isolation. And for crimes like this, for the rest of their lives. They should never be allowed to see the light of day. And this will be an effective deterrent. We don't have enough deterrent action. We have a lot of laws, we keep passing laws, but we are very poor at enforcing these laws. This enforcement of these laws will provide the deterrent action that is needed to deter people from committing these type of crimes. I mean, we're not even deterring the most basic crimes that are being committed here, right before our eyes. For instance, if you drive down anywhere, even here in NCDC, you see people blocking roads on the pretext of patching a portal, and they're collecting money, this is a crime. In every other country, they would be arrested and locked up. Here, we pass by and do nothing about it. <clears throat> you will see women being assaulted on the streets, just here. Nothing will happen. Littering and loitering, public, defecating and urinating, nothing will happen. Graffiti, nothing will happen. These basic laws are not being enforced. We talk a lot about Singapore here. Let me tell you about something that they did. They have a law that bans and prohibits chewing gum, bans and prohibits spitting. Now, we may look at this and we may say, why? Those are very, they're not even crimes. Yes, but it's the development of the mindset that the great leader Lee Kuan Yew was considering when he put those laws in place. If you chew, you will throw. If you litter and spit, therefore you disrespect authority. Then you'll be able to commit other more serious crimes. That's why he put those laws in place to deter even those very minor, what to us appear to be basic crimes or basic misdemeanors. He put laws in place and prohibited them and they're heavy penalties. And they apply the law and they ensure that they enforce it to deter those type of crimes and any other crimes from occurring. I agree with the leader for with the member for Animal Green. We need an elite team, a mobile elite team who are well trained. And in instances like this, we must demonstrate that we are serious about protecting our people's lives. These type of characters must be immediately arrested, disarmed. There's already laws for carrying weapons, for guns, etc. 
But no one is enforcing these laws. You will see images of policemen and soldiers right there whilst these terrorists are moving around carrying these weapons. They are actually raising illegal armies. And we are allowing this. We are entertaining this. This is frightening that we allow this to happen. And what's happening up in Enga is starting to cascade into all the other provinces. Even in my province, they have arms everywhere. We need a serious review of our disciplinary forces, our national security apparatus, our intelligence systems, which have broken down quite significantly. I'll give you a point. In 1975, we had 150 NIO officers. Do you know how many NIO officers we have today? Less than 30. Less than 30. In 1975, our population was just less than 3 million. Today, our population is more than 12 million. When an economy expands, and its population grows, its risks and opportunities also grow, its intelligence services must also expand. It's a given. We've done the exact opposite. We've allowed our intelligence systems to deteriorate. We do not have enough intelligence practitioners out there. They are supposed to be out there collecting information and data. Then there must be a very effective in information and data processing system in place to process the data to bring up actionable intelligence that can then be given to decision makers so they can make informed decisions. That's not happening. We are going backwards in this regard. Or actually not backwards, because backwards we were fine. We are deviated into some dark, obscure place. That's what needs to happen. Prime Minister, before I wrap up, I believe that you need to make a statement to this country saying what we are going to do about this and do it immediately. You need to make some decisions as to how this is going to be addressed seriously by this government. What's going to happen now? What will happen to those perpetrators, those murderers, those gun lords? In fact, it was reported today in an intelligence report that 500,000 Kina in cash was apprehended at the airport. That money was destined for purchasing firearms here. Bullets were also apprehended. A particular businessman who was on his way flying out was also supposed to be arrested, but they let him go. This is all related to the incidents occurring in Enga. This is a fact. We have to seriously do something about this. All these great plans we have about economic progress are not going to happen. Or if they do happen, they will be they will be happening whilst blood is being shed, our people's blood, especially the lives of innocent people. They are usually the victims, the greatest victims in this. Member for Oro. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker, for giving time me uh, time to speak. Thank you. I think from the chair, I uh, will allow only one speaker, the last speaker, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, members of the House. The conversations today are very, very important in light of the lawlessness that we face in our country. And I sit here and listen to everything said. A lot of very, very good discussions, very good suggestions, things that we all as leaders need to work together to improve the lawlessness in our country. It is a fundamental right that our people live in a good, law-abiding society. It is a fundamental right, and we owe it to them. But these things didn't happen yesterday. They happened over time. They deteriorated, Mr. Assistant Speaker, over time. We are now faced with the stark realities that we need to do something and do something very fast to fix all of this. We cannot keep on talking about it, Mr. Assistant Speaker. It is serious, and on both sides of the House, I sit and I listen. All of us have to work together to fix this for the benefit of our children, for our people, and for our country. Mr. Assistant Speaker, as I said, this thing didn't happen yesterday. But we cannot keep on complaining. We need to find some avenues as leaders and ensure that we move forward to address this and address it quickly. As government, we sit here not only in Enga, it's happening everywhere, all over our country. 
It's happening everywhere. And when we see the violence in Enga, and the recent one on Sunday of 50 people being murdered, and preliminary police reports, intelligence reports say the 50 people that were deceased were actually hired gunmen going into a battlefield and got ambushed. They were not innocent spectators. The problems that are there are huge. When people ask us, what has government done about illegal guns? People say, ban guns. What guns do we ban? Illegal guns are banned. This parliament banned illegal guns. We already banned them. We made the law ready. Someone with an illegal gun, this parliament has made a law that they've been imprisoned for a lifetime imprisonment. Has one been arrested? Not yet. We have done our jobs as legislators. We have done that already. We now need a law enforcement arms to arrest people in possession of high-powered weapons and send them behind bars and convict them as what the law says. We should also ask ourselves, where does the ammunition come from? Where does the weapons come from, Mr. Assistant Speaker? And as pointed out by many members of parliament sitting here, many of the weapons I hear from the good member for LIGAP, many of these weapons are purchased by facilitators of these tribal fights and so-called mercenary warfare. Most of the weapons come from illegal fishing boats, illegal sites outside, cross-border, but a lot of them come from our own internal armories. A lot of them come from our own internal armies. And these things need to be put a stop to. And we need to have people arrested. What has government done? We as government have already passed the law. We have already passed the law. It is now up to the law enforcement bodies to arrest them. We as government, as the good governor for Aura pointed out, need to improve on our intelligence services. What has government done? In the last six months, government has interacted with the larger intelligence community to enhance the capabilities of our internal NIO, National Intelligence Organization, and we are currently negotiating, sitting with them. NIO officers are now currently being trained and upskilled in analysis so that they can analyze a lot of the crime trend happening. That is what government has started and is beginning to do. With the intelligence community, not just with the NIO, but the police intelligence need to be upskilled also. And yes, we have failed in the last 10, 15 years, like the good member for Vani Green has pointed out. And we cannot just point fingers. We are now working on it to improve that. And I can assure you, the good member for Vani Green, that our intelligence apparatus is now being upgraded and upskilled. And we are looking at right now with bilateral partners from our various defense uh, treaties that we, ha we have signed with. With the Australians, we have asked them for help. And the Prime Minister signed an assistance treaty package for internal security to the tune of half a billion kina on top of what we have already given as government, 200 million kina last year, 200 million kina this year, and now half a billion from the Australian uh, Defence Treaty that we have signed with them. That will go towards majority of it to rebuild our capacity in the police force, to adjust for training, and to improve more training for our people in Papua New Guinea. Government has now put, we have 500 policemen undergoing training, Another 500 will be recruited this year again, going in for training. The Australian component will rebuild the Bomana Police College to the tune of $47 million to increase capacity, to build up capacity to 1,000 per annum to reach our target of 10,000 people by the year 2027. That is what we, as a responsible government, is trying to achieve. We hear talk about the higher cars. I am one of those 
who is actually not happy with the higher car development that has been happening in our country. But we don't just sit idle, Mr. Assistant Speaker. Let me assure Parliament. Last week, the police distributed 130 brand new hire cars throughout all stations, some of the major stations in Papua New Guinea, and another 130 brand, uh, sorry, brand new cars that you see in the papers, and another 130 is now on its way from Japan to be distributed towards all other police stations. We will be buying, purchasing up to nearly 800 police cars to distribute to all our police stations in Papua New Guinea. That is on top of what the police recruitment is being done. <coughs> Communications capability is being looked at. We also have 200 men being selected in the police force to start up in a light unit. They have already been selected. We have put money aside towards this for the 200 men, and those 200 men will be trained in high capacity situations to counter counter acts of terrorism, counter acts of heavy gun culture, and be able to combat with specialist skills to fight this trend that is involved with weapons in our country and to apprehend them. Because some of the skill set training, as a good, good uh, member for Vanimo Green would rightfully know, needs a really, really good set of skills of people to be able to counter these sort of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So intelligence capability is being built up Equipment is being built up, training is being built up, manpower is being built up. All we need now is the Anti-Terrorism Act to be brought in so that we can give the teeth to our policemen to be able to, be able to do what they are trained to do, to be able to go in there and apprehend people at no risk to themselves so that they cannot be prosecuted unjustly. They can be able to do it without fear or favor to do these things. But that is not only all we have to do. We need to rebuild on the discipline and command of our respective disciplined organizations. There is a big lacking in, the, in that uh, capacity, in the middle management, in our NCO cadre, in our, in our junior officer cadre. But the government, we have now recruited through the police force another 70 to 80 police officers direct entry from universities to be trained two years at Bomana and another year to be trained overseas to appreciate some of the skills and bring them into the middle management. Whilst we are waiting for that, we have for the interim period, the good police minister has already advertised through the police commissioner, advertised for 50 expatriate Commonwealth police officers to come and work as contract officers with our police force under the command of our police force to try to break in that cycle and ensure that they reinstill discipline, they reinstill performance, and instill good values back into our police force. That has been lacking for the last 10 to 15 years. So those are some of the objectives that government has been doing and is trying to do to ensure that we move into that field. With the Australian package, we are also having getting equipment airlift capability support in terms of helicopter support to help us assist in combating some of these crimes that are per being perpetrated in our country. And it's not just we talk about Enga today. It is a whole country that we need to address. In remote Alatau, in remote Telefomin, in remote uh, Kokopo, in Bougainville, all of these need to be addressed. But the United Nations target for manpower ratio to our police force in our country. Right now, we need 26,000 policemen to the population of 12 to 14 million people. We currently, Mr. Assistant Speaker, only have 6,000 policemen, 4,000 of them serving on the front lines, 2,000 serving in admin or not being able to work in a front line capacity. So we need to build up our police manpower up to 27, uh, 26,000 so that we can be able to meet the population uh, ratio for our country. And we need both sides of the house. When it comes to budget time, we need to impress on everyone that we need to put more money into building, rebuilding our capacity 
We need money to build it, buy equipment. We need money to hire these people. We need money to build up our intelligence. And we need good people to run it, properly, highly trained people to run this. We need a defense force to be, once again, the pride of our nation. We need them properly upskilled. And government has put money towards that. We now have the two CASA aircraft that used to be sitting in our hangars for the last six to ten years. Mr. Assistant Speaker, the engines are now on the way from uh, Indonesia to be put in so that those planes, the pride of the PNG Defense Force, can be flying again. We are now putting money into trying to assist our Papua New Defense Force become the pride it used to be. And that should be the pride that we should all be proud of. As young boys standing there watching the Defense Force and the Police Force come out dressed in their uniforms is what we should regain that pride again. That should be the pride of the next kid standing on the corner of his school too. And bring that pride back. It needs both sides of the house, all of us sitting here. We should not just talk about it. We should not argue about it. You may all get a must walk one time, the tram straight in. The magisterial services that we have talked about, the magisterial services we have talked about, Mr. Assistant Speaker, the Chief Magistrate just recently advised me that they have recruited 28 more magistrates. I think the good Attorney General would have. That is due to having more money put towards it. They used to have only 46 million kina, gentlemen and lady. Now, last year, they had 110 million kina put towards the magistral services. Because once you have the power of arrest, you prosecute, and then you have to confine them somewhere. The people who actually hear the cases are the lower judiciary, which is our magistral services, who hear 80% of our cases, things like tribal fighting, things like drunk and disorderly, things like summary of uh, things under the Summary Offenses Act. All these things are heard by the lower uh, judiciary, which is the magistral services. Let us support them a lot more. Let us support the judiciary a lot more. Let us build bigger and better jails that can keep people inside them too. Right now, our jails are filled to capacity, gentlemen. Our jails are filled to capacity. But when we come and sit for budget, let us not argue about the budget costs. Let us ensure that we put the money towards where our mouth is. Ensure that we have support of both sides of the house and put the money straight, lo halbim, lo line blumi, lo fixim, this all deteriorating conditions, lo houses, lo discipline forces blumi, lo car blo, lo equipment blo, lo recruitment blo, all. Organizer something must be fully supported by both sides of the house. So let me assure all esteemed members of parliament here, yes, we have started working on it. We are rebuilding our intelligence capacity. We are rebuilding the training for them. We are rebuilding a police training. We are rebuilding many facets of our law and order situation. It will not happen tomorrow, but let me assure you that will, it will happen. And it needs all of us. It needs all of us. Even in our communities back home, in my community back home in Leh, we need to support our village court judges. We need to show presence in a lot of these things. When there is trouble, we need to be there in the midst of our community, taking leadership, taking ownership, making certain that community blue me see now good, now by me run awesome country. It's not only central government that needs to do it. Every single one of us sitting here, including the lower level of leadership down in our LLGs, down in our provincial government uh, uh, areas down into the LRG levels, to our community levels. We need to rebuild on our education, to instill good discipline in our children. That is critical. We need to do that, gentlemen and uh, lady in this house. One then this left, I think I've gone out of time, so I will uh, say thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, leader of government business. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Before I move a motion, on behalf of the people of East New Britain and on behalf of the leaders of East New Britain, we pay condolence to the late the Honorable Education Minister, the Honorable Jimmy Ugaro, and the Parliament will be having a state funeral tomorrow. I remind all members to be present to give our last uh, condolences to our fallen colleague. Uh, thank you for the Parliament, thank you for the opposition and the government, the debates that we had today are really good. I thank the Deputy Prime Minister and the Prime Minister and the Police Minister for taking note. And I hope that uh, going into the future, some of the things that we've talked about today on the floor will be put to action so that we can give our people something back about safety in our country. With that, 
Mr. Acting Speaker, I move that the discussion be concluded. Honorable members, the question is that the mo motion be agreed to. Those who are in favor say aye. Aye. Those against say no. I serve it. Uh, leader of government business. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, I now. I, I now ask to adjourn Parliament to tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Honorable members, the question is that the question be agreed to. The motion be agreed to. Those who are in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I serve it. Members, I want to remind all of us that the late uh, um, Education Minister, uh, the casket will be brought to the lying state here. Just want to remind all of us. Uh, honorable members, I now adjourn the parliament to tomorrow, 10 a.m.